hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm a director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California, and I'm an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA for the private practice in West Los Angeles. We do have a course coming up on cast gold and direct gold every December, three days, it's hands-on. It's an amazing course, it will sell out, so hope to see you there. Today we're going to finish up the cast gold cementation quadrant by focusing on cementation, finishing, and polishing. And as you recall, we have an interesting assortment of restorations, a pin retain casting, a sort of experimental MOD with hollow grinds. We have a pin retain casting with an onlay. We have a two-part inlay on first molar and an onlay. So we're gonna apply Gluma first. This is after the rubber dam is placed. Obviously, everything is cleaned up. We don't want to use air abrasion at all during this procedure because we want to keep the enamel margins completely unaltered. And we're going to use Gluma, several coats of this, and you can either blow this dry or rinse it off depending on your philosophy for the use of Gluma. But I think it's really helpful to place this before you cement. We're now going to utilize the Serumer cement. And you notice that I apply it to the casting and to the preparation itself. And I want to make sure that I've removed any air pockets so that it's just completely cement against cement. Uh, when I'm cementing inlays and onlays, I always do it this way. Not so for crowns. For crowns, I just put the cement in the crown. But for an inlay or an onlay with all these intricate features internally, I think it's really important to make sure that you add the cement to the casting and to the preparation. We're going to cement this and then have the patient bite down on this double bite stick. Then you can remove any excess cement and verify that the margins are in fact 100% closed. You can take a look. I like to remove a little cement so I can visualize the margin before I have the patient come back in and use the bite stick again to forcefully place that casting into complete cementation position so it's fully adapted to the enamel and then have the patient bite down on that really hard. Then we can make sure that all the margins are clean and they're in particularly good, uh, good sealed uh, shape that they are. So let's utilize now a medium garnet disc and we're gonna rotate, in this case, this would be clockwise, so we're gonna be rotating from gold to tooth and that's always the way we wanna do it. Now, Dr. Tucker always said that this is the workhorse of all the discs and what he meant by that was this is going to do very fast work for you. It's very handy to start out with the garnet disc because it will very quickly get the tooth and the gold to the same plane. Now some parts of the tooth are easier to get to, some are harder to get to. So you have to basically just take your time and understand that some parts are going to be a little bit more tricky to see and to get access to. And now we're going counterclockwise with the disc, with the disc abrasive facing in, and we're pulling from the distal lingual uh, towards the mesial. Now I'm using the contra-angle. And with the contra-angle spinning in this particular case, it's spinning towards from the gold to the tooth, uh, and I'm having the, the abrasive facing towards me. And now the goal of this step is really simple. Get the gold and the tooth on the same plane. Once you've done that, you're now gonna go through the fine sand and the fine cuddle to essentially remove scratches. Uh, you know, it, it can also uh, it finesse the marginal seal a little bit, but removing scratches and getting the finish line uh, and gold interface even more smooth is, is a good objective. Now we don't use the edge of the desk, disc, nor do we use the side of it. We kind of use in between. Uh, so we're, we're kind of tipping the disc a little bit at an angle so we can get access to this particular part of the tooth. You see how it's not exactly just the edge, nor is it the side, it's sort of in between. Thank you, Dr. Tucker, for that very helpful bit of advice. Notice how we have to take the disc, flip it around, and snap it back into the mandrel, and sometimes change the direction of the motor so that we're always spinning from gold to tooth. Now the disc itself in a macro mode doesn't need to go from gold to tooth. You notice how I moving, was moving the disc mesial distally. That doesn't mean that my motion is going from gold to tooth, but the spin is going from gold to tooth. If 
we go the opposite way, we found that it just and doesn't quite doesn't quite seal the, the, the margins as well as we'd like. This gold has a very high capacity to be elongated and yet maintain its hardness. Uh, that's one of the aspects of this 77% uh, gold alloy, e either through a Jensen company called uh, JRVT or through Argon. Uh, they have something called HP77. And both of these golds are uh, very malleable have great elongation capabilities, they have low grain size and uh, small grain size, so they can be elongated really well, seal the margin in a, in a very precision way and uh, yet still be strong. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to find that the marginal seal we're able to obtain is significantly smaller than the film thickness of the cement. You know, the film thickness of the cement may be uh, 15 to 20 microns, but we're able to get margins that have a seal, which is oftentimes even less than five microns. I have a scanning electron micrograph of an inlay done by Warren Johnson, my mentor, uh, that shows that he has a 385 nanometer marginal gap with his final gold inlay on an extracted tooth. So it, that's pretty encouraging. This is really the disc which can be used uh, extensively even when it gets floppy and uh, very unstiff because uh, you can spin this at a higher rate of speed, you can use a lighter touch, and you can actually start the polishing sequence with this disc. I'd like to make sure all the scratches are uniformly small at the completion of the use of this particular disc. It's also really good to start in the groove areas before you roll on to the more convex areas. Dr. Tucker Jr. or uh, Richard D. Tucker uh, had really informed me of this particular uh, helpful hint. Always start with the disc in the groove and then move yourself out of the groove onto the more convex surfaces. So now these are just tried in. I haven't done any finishing yet. I haven't cemented them yet. Uh, and you can see the margins are somewhat irregular. And the reason why they're irregular is because Koi does not polish the margins because we believe that it, they only should be polished once. And if you're going to polish them in the mouth, you can polish them at that time. So there's no need to pre-polish the margins. Mol polish everything else. And maybe you want to polish margins that are not accessible, uh, but uh, leave them unfinished. And always use the bite stick to follow the, uh, the line of cementation, uh, the, the line of draw of that preparation. And then when you're using the stick and the off angle ch chisel, or maybe two sticks, you can use them like this by tapping on one and then tapping on the other to overcome this tendency sometimes for castings to tip. So, now, the rest of these castings have been cemented, all five of those, and I'm just taking you through the final finishing, utilizing the sand and cuddle, uh, because we've shown you how to use the disc pretty much in that uh, first section when we did the onlay. If you want, you can utilize a brownie and a greenie and a super greenie to uh, refine any scratches in the grooves that you might encounter. Uh, sometimes they're helpful for inaccessible areas interproximally, perhaps at the gingival margin, uh, corners with the lingual or corners with the facial, where you can't maybe get a disc to fit so well. And so it's nice to have abrasives like that to utilize when you're using the, uh, the polishing system that we have. So let's start with the flower pumice. Number four, and if you can, try to rotate the cup from gold to tooth just like we were doing with the disc as much as possible. So you change direction when you need to uh, flip maybe the, the cup from one side to another. So always think about forward reverse with uh, slow speed and making sure you're paying attention to that. So this is a slurry of water and pumice. Some people use alcohol and pumice. I just prefer water uh, and I found this to work pretty well. And we're, we're not going to spend too much time on the castings at this step because 
it's, it is possible to over polish with this first step because this is relatively abrasive compared to the subsequent steps we're going to be using. So perhaps uh, you can think about maybe no more than about five seconds per tooth would be probably about the most I would tend to use this uh, when I'm polishing. Now, what, now that we've applied it, I always like to say it's a two-step process. It's application followed by evaporation. So step number one is you apply everything and your dental assistant is just standing by. And then once you've got this sort of matte finish uh, and you've covered all the surfaces, uh, once again, trying to keep the polishing down to about five seconds per tooth, you're now ready to have the assistant blowing air while you once again go over the surfaces. And this is where you're gonna see the luster start to pop up. It's kind of like when you polish your car, you apply the polishing paste and you wait for the paste to dry before you buff it off so that it doesn't smear all over the surface. And that's what we're doing here. We're drying and we're rubbing it off uh, simultaneously. At this point, you can sometimes see some areas where there's a little reflection on the casting. This might be an indication where you've maybe overdone the, the number four flower pumice or perhaps an area where you need to go back and maybe use the fine cuddle just a little bit further, which I did in this case to remove the reflections that we were seeing popping up on those areas. In other words, reflection meaning like a little ledge between the gold casting and, and the tooth structure. not not a uh, open margin, just a slight discrepancy in the flushness of the surface. So now we pick up a new cup. We never use the old cup because it contains particles from the previous cup, uh, uh, the you know, previous abrasive. And then we're gonna dry this up over here a little bit uh, by using a little cotton roll to soak up the excess. That works really well. And then once again, take the slurry and then apply it to the castings again. Once again, uh, trying to pay attention to the direction of the, of the disc whenever possible and using forward and reverse where indicated. And this is the application step. So once again, the dental assistant is standing by, not doing anything at this point. Well, cut this seconds. is all us. And now we're going to utilize the air spray simultaneously with the with the disc moving over the surface very lightly and not too much pressure and uh, then we end up seeing a much higher luster at this point. I, I must emphasize that trying to do this kind of dentistry without a rubber dam is nearly impossible. I've tried it and uh, it's just it's too difficult to control the moisture in the mouth, just even the patient breathing is going to interfere with your ability to get a fine finish. So now we use one micron aluminum oxide and many people use this dry. Some people use this with alcohol. I have found that the slurry works really well for the initial phase of polishing. When, I, when I'm trying to get a maximum luster at the very end, I'll go with this dry because then I can suction off the powder while I'm polishing to keep the area really clean. But I think it just adapts really well. It gets onto the surface much better. You can see how it's, they're so shiny that they're, that they're actually pushing the powder away. The, the surface tension on these castings is, is pushing away the polishing material. It's, it's really kind of amazing. And you think, wouldn't you want to have restorations this smooth in your own mouth? And of course the answer is absolutely. As long as they don't show gold and look, look embarrassing from a cosmetic standpoint, an aesthetic standpoint, I would prefer this over any material on the planet in my own mouth. And I, a lot of my patients feel the same way. I think that you would all agree that the longevity of cast gold dentistry has no peer. We're looking at restorations that have the potential of lasting 30, 40, or 50 years. Uh, we've seen them even longer. I have a patient that has 60 year old castings that look absolutely amazing. You know, and I just, you just know you're not going to get that from uh, ceramic and composite options. So 
when it's not an aesthetic issue, I, I think that every dentist uh, that could have gold in their repertoire would, would be uh, at an advantage to those in the uh, community that don't know how to do cast gold. Well-placed inlays do not fracture teeth. If you think an inlay is a wedge and it causes teeth to fracture, you just are, are lacking uh, enough information about this topic. I know it's mentioned in textbooks, but a lot of those comments are based on flawed or empirical findings. Precision castings that are made to fit the tooth well are uh, actually really amazingly supportive of the tooth structure interface and provide the the tooth with strength, durability, and don't cause uh, teeth to fracture. If the inlays are not done properly, maybe the gold was expanded too much or the technique isn't followed carefully, absolutely inlays can cause fractures, but so can composites and so can amalgams. So it's just a matter of following the uh, protocols that we teach in this cast gold courses. And I think the margins are acceptable. So. It was a pretty good day. I'm glad to get this quadrant done. I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, I want to thank you for your attention in this uh, demo and hope to see some of you at the Cast Gold and Gold Foil course that we have at Stevenson Dental Solutions every December of each year. And I hope to meet you then. Take care.